Good afternoon. It is Thursday, December 5th, and we have um, some problems to go over. So let's get started with a few jokes and things. Um, and uh, it's Thursday, right? Thursday. Don't forget that we have our test on Tuesday. Okay. All right. We have our test on Tuesday. Make sure that you're also working on your um, study guide. All right. Let's get Sharon. I'm supposed to say Thursday, but that's all right. Okay. Uh oh. <coughs> Sneeze. <coughs> Ooh. Okay. Excuse me. All right. Uh, this is on Monday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, 71. That was so great because it found, ah, here we go. What's a math teacher's favorite type of music? <laughs> um, I thought this was funny because we've done a math teacher's favorite tree, favorite summer, um, favorite snake, um, algorithm and blues because we're using the standard algorithm. Um, so I figured this would be funny now and rhythm and blues is uh, what R&B stands for, which I'm sure you knew. Um, but yeah, algorithm and blues. I love that one. Okay. Our uh, rebuses for today um, are pretty good. Get it? Good. And then it's, it's somewhere uh, in comparison to the noon. Don't forget to use any prepositions like above, um, over, about after anything like that. And then maybe the shape it's going in and the word it is, and they have to be common phrases. That's what a rebus is. It like kind of just remind, remind you what, uh, what like a common phrase is. Okay. All right. So let's get started on today's homework. Okay. We are working on building fluency continually and we played a game today in class where it was like you know build the biggest number i'm going to do a little bit of that for homework too based on place value and i'm hoping that we are all at the next level for our homework evaluating your work against the notes revising your stake and writing down what was wrong how to fix it feel free to add any papers you want to the homework the more thinking you do the stronger your muscles your brain muscles are all right, so we have $50,000 to get to and a hundreds place and a tens place to work with. So if I have to get to 50,000, I have a hundreds place and these are the only numbers I have. I'm thinking, you know what? I have an eight. Um, so I'm going to go like 800 and then 60 and then I have one, two, three, <laughs> excuse me, place values. And then eight times six is 48. That's pretty close. But I know that I'm going to get a number that is close to this because of the place values that I'm using with the hundreds times the tens. And then over here, you'll see how, look, this is, this rounds to 1,000 and then this rounds to 50, which clearly is going to be, well, let me see. This is 1,000 times 50. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, we have one, two, three, four zeros, which is what we have here. One, two, three, four. And then one times five is five. So that's pretty great. All right. Let's keep moving. All right. This is finding the product, but multiplying by powers of 10. So let's get that place value set up. One, two, three, eight times two times one is 16,000. So important. One, two, three, four. Get those zeros out. Don't wait till the end. And then one, two, three, hook it. That's my comma. And nine times three is 27 uh, times one. All right, now this is a little bit trickier. I have 400 times something equals 2,000. Now, I just wanna think about this. 400 times two is gonna be 800. So that's pretty close to 2,000. 
or at least if I double that. So I'm not going to have two digits here because this is a single digit. And if I doubled it, it would be four. And even if I try one more, it would be five. So I'm not going to need two digits here. So I know I already have two from the 400, right? And I have to get to 2,000. So I'm going to need, this is the 2,000 number. That's the target. So I'm going to need four times something equals 20. Ooh, five. Four times five equals 20. And then I have the 100, four times 100 times five, just like above. And that's one, two from here. And then five times four is 20. Okay. All right. Same thing for number 10. I have to have 70 times something equals 28,000. So I already have 10. I'm going to need two more digits and then like a non-zero digit there. So I'm just thinking of my multiples of 7, 14, 21, 28. Yes. So that's going to be 7 times 4. So if I already have 7 times 10, I can have times 4. And then what do I need? So that's my 28 and 1, 0. I need two more zeros. And so it's going to be 400. N equals 400 because I'm asked to solve for N. Find the missing factor. And over here, N equals 5. Make sure that you answer, answering the expression there. Now, it says explain or show the thinking you used to solve question 9. Well, honestly, I did just show all that thinking, but I'll explain it. Um, for 2000, we already had a factor of 400, which is 4 times 100. So we only needed to move it one time to the left on the place value chart, that's a one digit number. Um, four times five equals 20 times the 100 from the 400 equals 2000, right? But because I, because I, only needed to move it one space from the hundred space to the thousand space ones hundreds to the thousand space. I only needed to multiply it by a single digit, a ones place. Cause I only need to move it one place. All right. Let's get started with the rest of the homework. Okay. So we are using a bunch of digits to uh, get a value that's pretty close to 12,000. So I'm going to use my knowledge of place values for this. And um, if you use different numbers, that's okay. As long as it, it's going to equal the same, about the same place values. Well, it has to have the same place values as 12,000. So it needs to go all the way out to the 10,000s place. Um, but then the math has to work out. All right, so I'm thinking if I have to get to 12,000 um, and I'm limited by the 100 times the tens place, I need a zero here, a zero here, zero here. I'm just coming up with numbers first. I'm just estimating and then I'll use these digits. Probably gonna need, I mean, I guess... It would be like a six and a two. That would be exact, right? Because one, two, three, and then 12. Okay, so that would be exact. So let's see how close I can get to that. Well, I could do five, four, three. That's the biggest possible number there. And then 21. Yeah. 
I guess that works. Okay. Three, four, five. One X, one zero. Six, eight, ten. Three, ten. Fourteen, one. Ah, nice. I got to 11,403. Same place values as 12,000. And I don't have like any bigger number to fit um, in the 500. So that's it. We did a good job. All right. I would say that that's the closest you can come to 12,000. You had other numbers that came closer to like five, um, sorry, to 10,000 and that would be okay. But that's probably the closest you're going to get with those digits. All right. So again, I'm limited by the number of digits or the type of digits and by the hundreds times the tens place. So I have three zeros, which means it's in the thousands place. And I probably need like a, I don't know, 500 times a 10. All right, so I have a five, four, three times 12. All right, six, eight, 10, three, four, five. Okay, so that's pretty close. Um, that's pretty close. Same place values. It goes all the way out to the thousands place. Was that to thousands? Oh, so sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's so crazy. That's decimals. Oh, sorry. Okay. It goes out to the thousands place, which means way bigger than one. Sorry about that. Right. All the way to 6,000. I'm going to write it again, but you can't see it yet. 6,000. Oh, crazy. Miss Cook writing the decimal. Anyway. Uh, so six thousands. All right. So it was fun. Okay. Now we have a really, really detailed problem. Carmela had collected some baseball cards and it is a word problem. So in order to solve word problems, I need word answers. You cannot just answer in Numbers. Numbers are important, but words are too. All right. So, so far, Carmela has collected 14 boxes of baseball cards. So she has 14 boxes and each box has three 15 per box. All right. She estimates that she needs, uh, she has about 3000 cards. So she buys six albums that hold 500 cards in each. Will the albums have enough space for all her cards? Well, in order to answer number one, I need to know how many cards does she have? Okay, so I need to do that. I need to have the number of boxes she has times the amount in one box. And that's the total cards. All right, and like I said, if you need extra paper, please spare no paper. All right, four times five, four, six, 12. Five, one, three, uh-oh, she's gonna have more. She has more. All right, so, sorry. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so A, Carmela, the question is, will, enough okay Carmela will need more album space because and I have to go back and answer this question six albums at 500 each because six albums at 500 each is 3,000 spots like she estimated, right? And she has more cards than that. Okay. And then letter B just says, how many does she actually have? B. Carmela has... 
4,410 cards. And I can write that here because I'm showing it above here. And so I can't just write it without the work, but once the work is there, then I can just answer the question and respond. And then C says, how many albums will she need to purchase? Okay, well, if there's 500, if 500 spots in each album, Carmela will need, let's see, 500 spots in each album. Let me just add this old school. 500 plus 500, that's two albums, a thousand cards. 2,000 cards, 3,000, 4,000, and 500, because she has 4,400. So she needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine albums. She will need nine albums for 4,500 spots for her 4,410 cards. Okay. And because I have all of this reasoning here, and because I'm putting this sentence, if 500 spots in each album, C will need nine albums and the number of spots it would be. That's all the thinking that you need to have. Okay. Let's not be intimidated by these problems. You can do it. The number of boxes, number of items times the amount per one equals the total. That just happens everywhere. Okay. Uh, it's Thursday. Have a good Thursday night. Um, get your study guide and see you tomorrow.